What's up YouTube? It's me, Jocelyn. I'm an opera singer. Today's video is Patron Pick of the Month, and for this month, they have chosen Freddie Mercury and Miss Cavalle performing Barcelona live in 1987. Rest in peace to two greats. Let's go. This perfect dream. This dream was me and you. I want all the world to see. A miracle sensation, my guide and inspiration. Okay, one, so I have heard of um, Mr. Freddie Mercury and Miss Cavalle. I'm very familiar with them as artists. I know what their voice sounds like. So the sound of their voice is nothing new to me. However, I had no idea that they collabed, let alone did anything live. That is something completely new to me. Okay, mapping everything out that I have in my head. The first thing I wanna talk about is the entrance because it was so grand. That is something to take note of considering how grand the production is, how grand the, the audience is, it all goes hand in hand together. So seeing them walk in together holding hands and then with a very stoic posture, they just seemed very confident in what they were about to walk into. That sets the tone for so many reasons. Then looking at the stage, there is a pianist who also may um, have the role of the conductor, and then you also have a mini chorus, a small ensemble of voices. And looking at them on the stage, one, two, three, four, I see four men. Now there may be more to the left of them, but I cannot tell. Either way, I point that out because there were some fairly high notes in the chorus part, and I wanted to pay attention to one specific part. I can't see. Wind is a gentle breeze. There's gotta be more people singing. Where are they? That just doesn't sound like it's coming from them. I'm not convinced. 
there's got to be female singers on the other side of the stage or something because it just doesn't seem like it's coming from them based off of all the harmonies you're hearing. But that's the first thing that I want to point out is the part of the chorus. We'll get to the two soloists just after this. The effect that the chorus had on the overall composition. It's this idea of what was being said by the soloists and how the chorus came in to respond to what they had just said. So let's look at the lyrics because I have no idea what the lyrics of this song are. So let's talk about the entrance of this chorus. They come in when Mr. Mercury says, the wind is a gentle breeze. The idea to incorporate the chorus just made this whole idea of what you view as wind and what it feels like, it made it feel that much more vivid. And I loved that. Then to amplify this vivid picture that they are trying to paint, the chorus comes in on a D4 and then they sweep up with a beautiful dynamic up to the octave D5 and that sounded so good again because of what they are trying to achieve, adding more colors to this painting of what we visualize wind to be. Okay, then it's the phrase right after this where the vibrato really comes forward, especially in the higher soprano line. Now, I don't know who's singing this because the camera is not showing them, but I believe they're somewhere on stage making these noises because I don't think it's coming from these four men. The higher notes from the soprano, there's a divisi between them. This is G5. G5, G sharp 5, F sharp 5, back up to G5. Those notes are beautiful, but I want to pay attention to, do you hear how much vibrato is coming through? The wind is a gentle I think two things were happening. I think one, they were asked to do that. And then two, I think in post-production, the sound engineer was ordered to bring that even more at the forefront because that is just really in your ear when it comes to this part. It was just a subtle reminder, honestly, of one of Freddie Mercury's distinct vocal characteristics. Genius! Okay, now let's move on to the two soloists, Mr. Mercury and Mrs. Caballé. First off, let's talk about Mr. Mercury. So what I want to focus on with Mr. Mercury is his phrasing and also the presence he takes up when he is performing. So first off, his phrasing. If you don't know, one thing to note of Mr. Mercury is how fantastic his phrasing is. And when I talk about phrasing, what I essentially am saying is picturing where the sentence as a whole is going to. And sentences in songs are broken up into phrases. Sometimes in some songs, you'll have an entire sentence in one phrase, but many times you'll have uh, sentences or questions or even exclamations broken up into different phrases. So in this instance, the very first line reads, I had this perfect dream. And that is all in one phrase. And that is one sentence. Now, if you paid attention to the way that he sang this one line, he really gave emphasis on certain places which gave shape to the phrase. There's a difference between saying, I had a perfect dream versus I had a perfect dream. <laughs> You can give some emphasis to certain words or even just a syllable within one word of a phrase in order to give some sort of shape to that phrase and also bring meaning to the phrase. If you don't give shape to the phrase, 
it almost equates to that monotone sound when people talk. It doesn't give any expression to the phrase and it kind of defeats the entire purpose. Unless that's of course what that line calls for, that's something completely different. Then his next phrase, this dream was me and you. And this is where you can really hear his vibrato come out, which is similar to the vibrato brung out in the chorus. Now he brings this, this dream was me and you, and then brings his his vibrato very strongly at the end of the phrase. However, he doesn't keep the end of that phrase forte. He really does back off of that last part of the note and let it phase out in order to reintroduce the next phrase, which is sung by Miss Caballé. I had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. This dream was me and you. His next phrase is, I want all the world to see. Now paying attention to the way he's saying this line, he went right through and really crescendoed into that word see by adding certain dynamics to the word. One dynamic he did was he sat on the S of the word see a little bit before actually opening up to the vowel. That brings emphasis to that word. And then he also continued that with a bit of forte on that word, which bring um, some new emphasis and just some new character to that line. I had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. This dream was me and you. I want all the world to see. Incredible phrasing, something that Mr. Mercury is very, very good at. The second thing I want to point out about Mr. Mercury is his presence. You really notice his presence on stage because of how confident he is in everything he does. He usually takes the stance, uh, whether he's holding an instrument or it's just him by himself. That's one of his characteristics. Another one of his characteristics is what he does with his hands. It's just instinctual to him and his, his performing ways. And it is something to learn from considering how successful he was and how loved he was. That also has to do with how talented he was. But what he did as those extras when he's performing, is just that awe factor. Now, Miss Caballé, if you do not know, she is Spanish and she speaks this language fluently. And you can hear that in her singing. Now, if you don't know, the translation of this of her lyrics is actually not just repeating what Mr. Mercury has said. So he's saying, I had this perfect dream. She sings, un sueño me envolvió which means a dream wrapped up in me. Then he sings, this dream was me and you. She sings, tal vez estás aquí. Perhaps you are here. Then he goes, I want all the world to see. And then she sings, un instinto me guiaba. Maybe it's guiaba. I'm not too sure. Which is an instinct guided me. So her first line, un sueño me envolvió. A dream wrapped up in me. Listen to how she sings this line. I had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. Do you hear how great her first line was sung? She came in so gentle and so effortless. It was so pleasing to the ears. One, because it just sounds so easy. And then two, it goes hand in hand with what she is saying. This is a very whimsical moment. Ethereal, it's, it's hazy maybe even. It's just this feeling of lots of emotions. And she comes in with that feeling in her singing. I don't think coming in on fortissimo, un sueño me volvió. I don't think that would have did any good to the line. The way she came in was just very Disney princess-esque, and I think went really well with the line that um, it reads. Another thing to pay attention to is her phrasing. What's important when singing in any language is figuring out the accent to each word. Now, in this line, there are two words I will talk about that have more than one syllable, therefore have a very specific placement for the accent. The first word is sueño. Now it's not sueño, but sueño. The second word is 
envolvió, not envolvió, not envolvió, envolvió. So it's on the very last syllable of that word. What is fantastic is you can hear those accents crystal clearly when she is singing those words. Granted, she does speak this language fluently, so that is to be expected, but for the average listener who doesn't even really know what's going on behind the scenes in terms of singing, that is definitely something you want to pay attention to. I had this perfect dream. Un sueño me envolvió. You hear how much attention she brings to those two syllables that need the accent. And attention doesn't mean singing forte, it just means to either in the composition give more time to those accented notes to let us know that it is accented, and then as a singer, give some feeling to those um, accented notes so that it comes out in your singing. Brilliant. Now her following line, tal vez estás aquí. She continues the same technique with this line that she did in the first line she sang. In terms of, it sounds very easy, it's gentle, it's not fortissimo, it doesn't have a crazy amount of vibrato, it's just sung in a very delicate way. I had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. This dream was me and you. And I think that is continuing this idea of what are the words you're singing and how can your technique amplify what it is you're saying in order for the message to better get across to your audience. She's doing it fantastic. Also notice there is a difference between Spain, Spanish. There's a difference between Latin, Spanish, wh whatever um, country you're going to. But here you will hear her sing tal vez estás aquí, instead of tal vez estás aquí, which is different from different countries, but that is Spanish from Spain. Finally, her next line reads, un instinto me guiaba. Oh, I loved the little decoration on the word guiaba. One, the intonation of each note was crystal clear, and then two, I love how the vowel was very clear on each note. And then thirdly, I just love how connected it all was. I had this perfect dream. Sueño me volvió. This dream was me and you. I want all the world to see. Instinto me She's very, very good at that. I, I must add. Barcelona.
Wow, incredible, incredible. It was so good. And to actually think about when this was, so this was in 1987. And he passed away just, what, like four years after this? Um, it's honestly really sad. He wasn't even, I don't even think he was 50 when he passed away. But what a great thing for Spain to have in, in their repertoire. If you didn't know, this song was written, I believe, I believe more than a year before it was performed on this day. And it was written as a celebration for the Olympics in Spain that year, 1987. Let's talk about one last thing in terms of this performance. And that is, maybe I'll call it spontaneity. So I'm not sure how many takes it took to put all of this together. It's quite clear that this isn't a live take with the live recording and the visuals. Maybe there was multiple takes and they put them all together and there's some splicing or whatever being done. But this idea of spontaneity is really fun to think about in both of the soloist parts. Freddie Mercury, spontaneity is just something that seems to go very well with his name. It almost seemed like some of their lines were improvised. It just seemed like they were genuinely going off of each other's vibe. Now, Freddie Mercury has a very particular vibe when he's performing and you can hear that through all of his songs. And when you, when you hear the phenomenon of Freddie Mercury's upper register, it just brings about, at least for me, it just brings about excitement because you can see how much he's enjoying himself in all aspects of when he's performing, to see how much he's enjoying himself in a very difficult reg register of, of any male voice's range is quite spectacular. And going off of that energy was so amazing to see in Miss Caballé. I haven't seen her in a performance like this before. You know, the operatic performances I've seen, and I've heard a lot of records where you there's no visual aspect to it. But this is quite phenomenal to see because it almost seems like this new persona um, is coming alive within her in this performance. And you don't get that super reserved, I'm just standing on stage and I'm going to sing my audio very, very well, but I'm going to do it in a very professional, I'm not going out of bounds type of way. So to see that was really amazing. And I think it was amazing too, because it complemented how energetic and how just fun sounding her um, coloratura was. And I think it added to the performance overall. It's spectacular to see that version of her. Overall, fantastic job. Thank you patrons for always recommending the best performances. I've got to give it up to you guys. If you liked all that you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Comment down below what performance by your favorite artist you would like me to do a performance analysis on. Lastly, make sure you check out the description box for ways you can keep in touch with me, get access to exclusive perks, and to check out the Soprano Notes blog. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye!